The Witcher has returned with its third season and this will be the last season that we see Henry Cavill portraying the character of Geralt of Rivia. It's indisputable that Henry is a fantastic choice for the role, not only because he looks the part and has the acting and physical prowess needed, but he also won over the hearts of the fans by displaying his love for and knowledge of the source material, making him seemingly a perfect fit. You are genuinely a fan of the books and the, and the game and everything, so do you correct people? Um, I don't necessarily... <laughs> I am effusive about it being being loyal to the source material, let's put it that way. To me, Netflix's Geralt is not quite as light-hearted or as quick-witted. He's, uh, he's, he's a little bit of a grumpier Geralt than uh, the one in the games, though that's probably down to the writing and direction more than anything else. <laughs> And I guess you do somewhat determine, to a certain degree, Geralt's personality in the games through the dialogue options. And it just so happens that I, I tend to choose the uh, slightly more jovial responses. But beware of wild strawberries. Raspberries too. Yeah, treacherous as beasts go. I always keep an eye out for them. Henry possibly looks a little bit younger than game Geralt as well. Just a, just a little bit. But other than that, he is a phenomenal witcher. Uh, you know, unquestionably a great pick for the role. Uh, you know, he carries not only two swords, but the entire show pretty much as well. <laughs> so it came as quite a shock to everybody when Henry announced that he was stepping down as Geralt. But when we learned that the Witcher series showrunner Lauren Hisrich found Cavill's enthusiasm for the Witcher to be, quote, really annoying, Henry's resignation started to make a little bit more sense. If I remember rightly, she tried to uh, drag Henry through the mud a little bit as well, suggesting that he was hard to work with and that his behaviour was at times inappropriate. But it turned out that this inappropriate behaviour was Henry having to consistently correct or guide the cast because they were continuously diverting from the source material. Can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine having to work with someone who cares about what they do? Oh, it's, oh, it's just... It's just unthinkable. Now make sure you're sitting down for this one because apparently Henry Cavill didn't only play the games, he read the books as well. I can't believe you've done this. Writers that were known for disliking and making fun of the source material, showrunners who found enthusiasm for the games and the books annoying, and Henry Cavill, someone who seems like the only guy on set who actually cares about The Witcher in any way, quitted his job as The Witcher what was, you know, what I imagined was one of his dream jobs. So many red flags were popping up, it was starting to look like Nuremberg. So, the time is here. Season three, was there anything worth worrying about? There's only one way to find out. Let's take a look at season three, episode one. And it gets right into it and kicks off with a little bit of action, nice. Now, I don't know if they're doing it for the meme, but I did actually find it quite funny that Geralt's very first line in the show is, mm. I am Petunia. <laughs> Are Netflix writers self-aware or is Henry doing it for the meme? I mean, who knows, man? Who knows? So we rejoin Geralt, Yennefer and Ciri, who at the end of the last season almost died on Mars, but didn't. And it turns out we've already got a new meme for season three. For the last two seasons, we've just been getting a whole lot of Geralt going, mm, eh, mm, 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 eh, mm, mm. If you wanted to catch up for the last two seasons, by the way, that's all you need. That, that, that just, mm, there you go. Seasons one through two, sorted. But season three, a little bit different. It would appear that the, uh, the new theme for this season is Geralt looking at something and then looking into the distance scornfully at something else, whilst music's playing in the background. It's been a little while since I've played Wild Hunts, but I seem to remember Siri being a bit more of a stoic character than she is in the show. I mean, admittedly, she is younger in the show, like she is in the book, so arguably, I guess the events in this would have taken place before any of the events that would have led to a, a, the Siri that we know in the games with a bit of a thicker skin. Uh, even so. What do you think? I think you need to hide your hair and mask your eyes. Would it kill you to say you look lovely? Siri. Do keep in mind that they narrowly escaped the hunt quite recently, have been on the run since. The last place that they settled down in was burnt to the ground. So Geralt, quite rightly, is sat there saying, hey, look, maybe don't show your face. We want to be a little bit inconspicuous, you know, on, a, on, you know, on account of the whole, I don't want to die. 
and shit. Oh, uh, you never tell me I look pretty. So you would think at this moment that discretion is paramount for the trio. And you might imagine that, well, Siri must have put an awful lot of effort into disguising both her ashen hair and her face so that no one may identify her. Are you shitting all over my dinner plate? That is a Pink Panther level disguise. <laughs> no one will ever spot me and my ashen hair as long as I hold this within six feet of my face. Yes. <laughs> Good luck identifying me. I am on all levels except physical practically invisible. Okay, so the disguise isn't going to fool anyone, but at least Geralt can keep an eye on Siri. I mean, come on. I mean, what's he going to do? Loser? Let's go in the maze. Come on. Siri is the only person not wearing some form of disguise, and the party has a maze. <laughs> of course it does. Gee, I really hope something bad doesn't happen. Oh no! Guys, something bad happened! Oh, how could I not foresee this misfortune? So, Siri is attacked by a giant armadillo that is apparently only interested in poorly disguised blonde girls. If only I had that bulletproof disguise from earlier, that monster would have never spotted you. I would imagine that this scene is inspired by the uh, A Matter of Life and Death quest from The Witcher 3. You go to the Vengelbud estate where there is a party and there's a maze and it's one of the better moments from the romance arc with Triss Merigold. And true cultured gentlemen know that Triss Merigold is better than Yennefer. Come on, I, I don't even need to tell you this. And we now join Dandelion, and although we may somewhat resemble his video game counterpart, his persona is a little bit different. Netflix's Dandelion is much, much dumber than the in-game Dandelion, uh, for the sake of what the French would call la comedy, uh, but ironically, he doesn't actually land anywhere near as many jokes. These aren't even mine! Did you think you were the only one having some fun on the side? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still undecided whether I like this character or not. I, I get, uh, I get serious big cook, little cook vibes from him. Be careful, Ben. <laughs> Don't worry, Ben. I'll just lick it up. Mmm. <laughs> wow, that was deeply disturbing. So Geralt and Yennefer then use Siri as bait to draw out the big mean men who've been chasing after them this whole time. And when these two sides meet. This is where we reach the episode's climax. And I will say that there's a nice bit of choreography in this scene. A lot of the swordplay looks really, really genuinely good. Eh, sure, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance, and there are some moves that you would never realistically see someone use in combat, but, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't enjoy a little bit of flamboyance. There's this one part where Geralt blocks an axe, and as the guy pulls it away, because it's got that hook, it flips his sword round, then he flips it back over, blocks another swing, flips it again, blocking the guy in the back. I've read that Henry was practicing daily with his sword when he was working on this show, and it paid off. I really, genuinely enjoyed watching this scene. It looked real good, solid stuff. So the action is, uh, it's kind of like me. Pretty pointless, but uh, looks kind of cool. <laughs> Am I right? Am I? Don't answer that question. Also, Yennefer has remarkably avoided harm thus far. She stood there, in the middle of the battlefield, dressed like my auntie, doing this shit, and everyone is just like, oh yeah, look at that, there's a, there's a witch over there making a portal in the mess. It's probably not important, we'll just, we'll just leave it to it. Man, the elves really can't catch a break either. They ambushed Geralt and the gang whilst they were mid-battle with the other guys that were chasing Ciri, which isn't the most honourable move, but they still pretty much all ended up dying anyway. I mean, way to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory, guys. So the big fight is over. Of course, the good guys win, depending on your outlook, I suppose. And then Ciri and Yennefer then come to a mutual consensus that whatever they do, Moving forward, they should not split up. So they have a discussion with Geralt, and Geralt comes to a compromise and decides that they're going to split up. It's going well. It's hard to say how the series is going to turn out from just one episode, uh, because so far there's not been any serious plot events. It's, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, I, you know, hopefully moving forward, they're not going to completely disregard the books in the games. <laughs> Am I kidding? But, uh, you know, there's only one way to find out. So, 
join me next time where we'll take a look at episode two. But until then, guys, make sure you take care of yourselves. And thank you for watching. And as always, a big shout out to the patrons and the channel members. We've got Flunky, Posamon, Infinite Dum Dum, Cuss, Jax, David, ATS, Texas Lawman, Michael, Steve the Goat, David, Digital EXE, Daggerd69, incredibly nice. And of course, Michael Terpia. To each and every one of you top tiers, thank you so much. We've got the tier twos. Saeed, Dr. Melski, Yonwich, Hanziu, Mendicant Bias, Sensei Fang, Mark Maidens, Kenneth Dogramachi, Saint Nemo, Michael S, Rich Walwick, Magga and Yarrick, Nystagmus, and we're welcoming the Grand Admiral on board. Welcome to the fleet, my good friend. And of course, a big shout out to each and every one of the tier ones as well. Thank you, each and every one of you. Your support means the world to me, it really does. Thank you. And there we go, another day, another video. What are you tell me about my next one? You better do. Shut up, bitch. Better tell it.